So I was going through the previous episodes of the ASM series and I realized I never talked about looking for domains that belong to an organization. We talked about subdomains through uh, using search transparency. We looked at Shodan, uh, we looked at ASN, but there is a bit that's missing and that's identifying domains that belong to a company. So hi, my name is Naham Sek, and today I wanna to talk about identifying domains or root domains that belong to an organization. But before we jump into the video, I want to quickly talk about something super exciting that's coming up. If you're familiar with my videos, you know that I love Capture the Flag, whether it's playing in them, whether it's hosting them, or whether it's just watching other people play and get excited about CTFs. So the next CTF I'm going to participate in is going to be on November 9th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. It's actually called Fetch the Flag, which is a free virtual CTF hosted by Sneak. If you don't know about it, I'll put the link down below in the description. But this CTF is going to range uh, from anything pwn to web it's also going to be very beginner to advanced friendly so if you already play ctfs there's something there for you if you are new to ctfs there is also something in there for you as well there's going to be about 16 challenges you can actually play with a team of up to five so bring your squad and you can actually play against thousands of other teams and in addition to bragging rights you can actually win prizes that includes championship swag and includes other types of prizes. Go out to their website. Again, the link will be down below. Go check them out and see what it's about. Plus, if you are new to Capture the Flag, you can join the CTF 101 workshop the week before. That starts on November 2nd. You can learn the best practices and their hacking tactics. Uh, if you're new to the scene, this is something really, really good that you should try on. You will solve practice challenges in a hands-on environment. Plus, you get to have a live support from experts, so you'll be ready to compete on game day. And if that wasn't enough, you can come back in a few weeks. I'm going to do a write-up and make a video of the CTF once I get my hands on some of these, and you can check them out. So for now, this CTF is totally free. It's online. Go check it out. The link will be down below in the description. So if you go back through one of the last episodes, I talked about search transparency using cert.sh but I never talked about how you can use that or automate it to pull root domains or main domains that belong to a company. So for example, if you look at PayPal, how can you identify every domain owned by PayPal outside of paypal.com? We can use search transparency for that. It's a little bit messy, it's not accurate, but it is free. And later during this video, what I will do is I will talk to you about what uh, premium data set you can buy for that's not really expensive, Woxy, Woxy, however you say it, you can use their data leveraging reverse who is data and actually pulling the domains that belong to a company like PayPal, Yahoo, whoever you're hacking on. Let's first look at the free option and then later we'll look at our paid option and compare the results. So instead of looking at the cert.sh website, what we're going to do is we're going to use their APIs and we're going to use curl. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a curl request to cert.sh and we are going to get ask for the organization. In this case, we are going to look at, uh, let's say PayPal, and we're going to have it give us the output in the JSON format. Once we do this, it's gonna give us a list of all the domains that belongs to PayPal, and then we're going to clean it up as soon as it comes back and look at how we can clean it up and get a list of domains. So now that we have all of this, we have to clean it up. There's a lot of data that we don't need, but you can see there are domains like PayPal Labs in here. There's probably paypal.com and a bunch of other ones. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna clean this data by using JQ, but to make it easier, I'm going to write this all into a file first. So now that I have it written all into a file, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use JQ. Again, this file is the same as what I showed earlier using curl, it's just the output of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, JQ actually pull all the common name for us and that will help us clean it up a little bit. I think we might have to do a little bit more, but as you can see here, there is a ton of domains. There are some domains that have uh, right here, for example, it has a wildcard. We want to remove those and we want to also make sure there are no duplicates. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to use the same command and we're going to use said to clean it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, if there is a star in here, I just want you to replace it with uh, pretty much anything uh, other than that. So we're just gonna leave it empty 
and we are going to close it out. So let's see if that works. I did one too many. There we go. Now that we have, we have our output, what we're going to do is we're going to see how many lines we have. It's about 10,000. And we're going to redo this, but this I'm going to do sort you. So it's going to give us unique outputs. So now it's went from 10,000 to 3,771. So that means there were a lot of duplicates in this data and we clean it up. But again, what we have here is also subdomains. We have www right here. We have stats. We want to make sure we get this bit of the data. We just want the domains, no subdomains in there. So you have a few options of what you can do. The less efficient way to do it is to use reverse. What Rev does is it takes any string. So for example, if I typed in www.paypal.com and feed it to Rev, what it do is it reverses it exactly what it is. It's reversed. And we can take this and use other bash scripting, or if you want to use Python, you're more than welcome to, but we can just use our Rev and feed it to a cut command and just get this bit. So we want to get the first dot pretty much you want to get whatever dot com whatever that tld is so we can do rev and we can do cut dash d using a dot for uh our separation and then look for the first two uh strings that match that so we're going to do cut use again the dot and then we're going to say hey the first two fields is what we want and that's going to give us paypal.com in reverse and we can reverse it and it gives us paypal so we can copy this entire command and we can type it into our previous one right here. And what it will do is it's going to run that all around for all of our data, reverse it twice, get the domains, and then we're going to give sort you, and it's going to give us a list of all these different domains. The problem here is that you can see something like verisign, where.com, x.com, uh, I don't know about Zong or this. Some of these may not belong to PayPal. But if you manually look at this, there are a good number of domains that we can use. But honestly, you can do a better way of using all this. There is a Go uh, binary that you can download. It's called parse domains or domain parser, sorry. And what domain parser does is it actually, let's do it one more time. It actually takes all the domains in there and just parses it. So you don't have to do any magic with bash or python and you can see it comes up again there's a lot of duplicates so we can sort it again and it gives us all of these the nice thing about this is if you're looking at our previous list we would have missed something like co.uk it would have just given us co.uk because we were just using the first two dots using rev but the good thing with parse domain is that it gives us a list of all of them so it just looks for all the tlds that have a list of it so let's just look at rev really quickly for this one if we're using rev for this Let's do it one more time. If I was using ref for this, and I did the same thing as our previous cut, we would have missed everything because it would have just given us .com, .cn instead of whatever the domain name was for this. So that's a free way you can do this. It gave us a list of domains. It wasn't bad, it was free. You don't have to spend a lot of money, but you can also use a tool like Woxy, Woxy, however you wanna say it. What they do is they have who is data on every domain and you can query that data and get the domains that you want based on it. Let's just jump into it and look at what it looks like. So keep in mind, this isn't a free service, but again, I think it's worth it. You can spend a few dollars, let's look at it really quick. You can spend a few dollars, maybe a couple of bucks to get a thousand requests or you can spend $100 and get 10,000 requests depending on how much you want to use it. But let's look at what it looks like. So for the example for this video, I'm going to look at Apple because they have been a really good paying company lately. I have some Apple hack on them. So if we look at them right here, the who is data comes back for it. There's a name servers. There is the name when it's just, just the domain administrator. Sometimes this may be unique. Uh, in this case, it's not. The next one is the company name, Apple Inc. And you can see they own 53 thousand domains just based on that company name and then down here we can see the email address domains at apple.com which owns 49,000 domains and we can click on both of these by just going through this data you can see that there is a ton of domains 
that I would have ever heard about, example, applecomputer.com, the Apple, Prismo, publishing surveys, all these different domains that belongs to Apple that could be potentially a lead if you're hacking on a bug bounty program or if you've been doing a pen test or if you're giving a company name and you want to list all their assets, you can look for it through this. And if you go to the looking at the company, so the previous one we looked at was just based on the email address, domains.apple.com. But if we go back and look at Apple Inc. as a company name, you can see Apple Pay Co. is one of them that was created in 2014. And then we can go all the way back to 1999 with Apple Final Cut Pro World that was also registered to Apple as a company. And again, this is and the best way to do it. They also have a, a lookup API. You can actually use their API to look for it. So again, you can do JSON uh, or you can do XML, but we're going to look at the who is history. Actually, we're going to look at we are actually going to look at the reverse who is API and we're going to look at the email address and it is domains at apple.com. And this is going to give us a list of all their domains in a JSON format and you can use JQ to extract the domain names for all of these and use it for whatever purpose it is that you are using. So that's it. There's also a tool. I want to say go tool. It's called Woxy RM. You can look at it on GitHub. It's a CLI that's ran around Woxy's API. If you don't want to use the API, you can use that to collect data. It could be faster. It could be better. I don't know. I haven't used it as much. I rely on the API because it's just a nicer way to get data and I'm used to using APIs. And I don't know who did this. I want to say Codingo was the guest that came on the live recon stream on Sundays on Twitch and showed me this. And ever since he showed me this, I've been hooked on it. I've enjoyed using it. And it's been a great asset for bug bounty hunting, especially on large organizations like Apple. But before we end this video, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you like this video, give it a like. And also let me know what you want to see next in the upcoming episodes. If there's a method, there's a tool, or there is a data source you want me to take a look at, drop it down below in the comments and I'll take a look. Okay, that's it. I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.